Welcome back, troglodytes, to another episode of Trogly's Guitars. Oh my gosh, guys. This custom is something else. This is the one for people with back issues. Uh, when we got this thing in, we bought it because of this beautiful top. Look at that awesome top. Super flamey. But when we pulled it out of the case, we were just dumbfounded. This thing is under 9 pounds. It's 8 pounds, 10 and a half ounces. This is the lightest custom we have ever had. And usually these beautiful, beautiful custom pluses from the late 80s and into the 90s are heavy. They're usually like 10, 11 pound guitars. We actually just uh, sold one that was 12 and a half pounds. So this thing being as light as it is, is just mind-boggling. They must have used some very uh, choice woods on this one. Because, you know, a beautiful maple top like that usually makes it weigh quite a bit. But this thing is phenomenal, guys. I, I can't tell you enough. I thought the pickups were going to be replacements. Because the place we got it from, they said it was a 498, you know, 496. But no, they are the original... Uh, the, well, <laughs> they are the original, the original uh, pickups. That's what they were actually called. They are the circuit board pickups that were only in customs, I think, uh, if I can remember correctly, I think it's through 88 through 90. It was only those few short years that they used those. They were designed by uh, Bill Lawrence, HBL, HBR. Very cool pickups. They are original. This guitar appears to be all original except for the strap buttons. Maybe the speed knobs. I mean, they just don't look quite aged enough for my liking, but they, they might be original. And uh, you're missing the pickup covers. But besides that, I think usually I'm a pick cover, pickup covers on guy. But I think this, this guitar just has such a vicious vibe to it. The uncovered look actually looks pretty good. So let's take a look here. Uh, typical, uh, you know, light binding cracks, lacquer cracks. That's what I'm looking for around the uh, logos. That's just how Gibson makes their guitars. It's how you know it's authentic. You got some light pitting on the gold. I actually kind of like the look on this one. It's got a nice feel as well. A little bit of a crack there in the uh, truss rod cover, but you know that's just to be expected over time. The frets are in great shape. It looks like uh, they're probably recently serviced. Got a nice ebony fretboard on here. And you have your typical humidity cracks on the side of the binding on both sides. That's when the guitar goes from a high humidity level to a low humidity level. It makes the wood actually shrink in low hum humidity, which causes that crack. It's just a very slight shrinking. Uh, if you didn't have binding on, what you would experience is those sharp frets. But you don't have to worry about that. All right, so on to the uh, body here. It's This guitar is actually pretty clean. I mean, you've got quite a few light picking scratches, nothing that couldn't really be polished out. Now you're probably saying, hey, Trogly. What's with these giant screws? Uh, that's just what came stock on the circuit board pickups. So that's how I knew this guitar originally had it, had them before I was even buying. So I was like, oh, for place pickups, I bet. But no, I was pleasantly surprised. Those are really rare pickups in there. They sell for quite a bit. So as you can see, a few light dings on the top. Nothing, nothing too extreme. I mean, if you're looking for a clean custom, I mean, I wouldn't say this is the cleanest custom out there on the market, but it is definitely a fair condition. I mean, I don't think you'll find much cleaner. I mean, just give it a nice polish. You can probably get rid of most of these polishing scratches. One thing I will say about this guitar, it has a very slight odor to it. Uh, it came to me from Japan uh, through a, a reputable dealer. We kind of did some trading here. And the best way to describe this smell, and once again, excuse me, 
It is a very, very light smell. I'm kind of letting it air out. Most of it will be gone. The best way I could describe it is if you walk into like a Chinese food shop, kind of like a soy sauce smell. Uh, it might have been just a uh, polish of some nature, but I just thought I'd let you guys know. I honestly don't uh, notice it anymore because I kind of let it sit out for a couple hours. But just letting you know that is there. Maybe you will like that smell. All right, so you do have a little bit of a wear up in this corner. It looks like it got a little bit of a ding. This is a very early 1990. It was on the 19th day of the year. And uh, these custom plus models, they're just uh, customs with nice flame tops. They're, they're just really cool. The 90s really sparked some very, very nice customs. So if you're looking for a custom with a flame top, look no further than the 90s customs. This is the start of kind of when Henry had bought Gibson. I think the official date was somewhere in like 87, 88 when Gibson went under their current ownership. And they just kind of really threw out the nicest woods they could find. So that's why the 90s are kind of known as the Goodwood area. Now you do have quite a bit of buckle rash up here. It's not destroying the finish by any means. And when you don't have the light in it, you really can't tell it's there. But it is there. And you have some light you know, impression scratches, as I call them. But nothing that's destroying the finish. This guitar is amazing. It just truly is. Everything appears to be stock in there for the most part. I don't remember anything not being original. It'll be in the listing if I am remembering wrong. Oh, I guess one other thing to address. Uh, 90s Customs just had that dark heel. There has been no heel repair or anything like that. That's just how 90s Customs are. I guess the other, uni I guess you got a pretty decent impression slash ding there, but nothing too bad. There's your replace strap buttons. Okay, back to what I was saying. It's almost like there was a uh, a stand that did that to it. Okay, so <laughs> back to back to back to what I was saying. Like the back of the 90s customs didn't get the burst kind of like the uh, 70s customs did. That, that's just how they are. It's part of just what a 90s custom is. And this thing is beautiful. And it comes with its original case over here. It's in actually pretty good shape. You've got some light nicks and dings, but nothing too much to complain about. You still have your pink shroud on it as well. Nothing in there, but still very cool. So Gibson, I guess people love these cases so much. Gibson actually uses a very similar case yet today, just because of how popular they are. And the case is kind of where that smell comes from. That soy sauce kind of oriental smell. I don't know. It doesn't really bug me too much. And I'm not a big Chinese food eater. But just letting you guys know. And I guess throughout this, what I'm seeing in my iPad right now, the color's a little bit brighter in person. It's kind of got that uh, vintage sunburst look to it. So if you think you might be interested in being the new owner of this beautiful Killer custom, awesome top, awesome lightweight. Feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglies, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel here to see all the guitars we post as we post them for sale, as well as check out a few video demos that we're currently working on trying to get up and running in a, a meaningful manner. And hey, don't forget to check out the reverb listing for availability. All right, Troglodytes, we will catch you next time. Bye.